You're listening to the Femcast Podcast, the podcast for women who are truly ready to drop the paralyzing perfectionism and self-doubt and just live their best hot mess life. Let's do this. This podcast is listener discretion advised for mature content and coarse language. Whatever. Hey, you guys, what is up? And welcome back to the show. I'm so excited and grateful to have you here. As always, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, Today, I kind of wanted to talk about something I know oh so well. (laughs) And that is being a perfectionist while trying to live your best life is actually impossible. (laughs) It is literally the impossible task. Um, Although, Many of us try. In fact, many of us think that perfectionism is the route to living our best possible life, but that is an absolute lie. And I'm here to break that. I'm here to bust that lie right now. (laughs) It's a lie we tell ourselves. (laughs) Whenever you hear it, lie, lie, lie. Just tell yourself it's a lie. Um, what you inevitably end up doing is putting your life on hold, waiting for perfection, for, for perfection, perfection that obviously never comes. <laughs> so, you know, if you're somebody, you know, who often struggles with feeling like they've been putting their life on hold, um, where you, where you can recognize that just maybe there's a little part of you that is thinking, hmm, maybe being a perfectionist is keeping me from leave, living my best life then you're going to want to stick around and listen to this episode. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's have at it. Um, I, <laughs> I am not a spring chicken. I am 48 years old. I don't act it. I didn't look it up until a couple of years ago, although now I think time is really starting to catch up with me, but I think I'm, su- I'm still doing pretty good. Um, not that that matters, but I say that because sometimes people think I'm a little bit younger than I am. And I certainly sound younger than I am, but I want to make it clear that I might be a little bit older than you think. And the reason why I want to actually stress this is because for decades, and I cannot stress for decades enough, like I'm, I'm 48. So like I'm literally almost 50. And for the majority of my life, I would say up until my early 40s. This was me putting my life on hold, waiting for perfection, not making the changes that I wanted to make because I didn't feel ready, not doing the things that I wanted to do because I thought I needed to do a thousand other things first and not living the life that I wanted to live because I did not feel good enough to live it the way I wanted to live it. So sad, right? Sad, but true. So I'm going to share with you how, you know, how I've held myself back for decades, what sort of things I was kind of holding myself back from. And also, you know, maybe going to share some of my own experiences, little anecdotes, tips and ideas to help you drop the paralyzing perfectionism and just decide to live your best life now, even if it is a fucking hot mess because that's what we're all about here at the Femcast, all while mastering the art of radical self-love and acceptance. So let's dive right in. Let's do this. Oh my gosh, what sort of things was I holding myself back from? Well, let's see. There is a list. Um, First of all, let's talk about the reason I was holding myself back. Um, one of the big reasons for me was because I was struggling with my weight. So because I was struggling with my weight, this, this is a perfect example, actually. Maybe we'll just focus on this for the time being. Let's take my weight, for example. You know, I've, you know, I've always been kind of the same weight almost my whole life with, ex- with the exception of a few, you know, challenging eras or seasons. And I will say this, whenever I go through a challenging season, I do tend to put on weight. So there is a link, I do believe 100%, there is a link between emotional well-being and the weight that we hold on to. Um, so for me, one of the challenges is when I did put on weight, I would truly and 
most drastically hold myself back from all mo- so many things that I wanted to do because I was so insecure about my body and the extra weight that I was carrying. Not that I was ever obese or anything, but you know, for me, I didn't look like myself. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel as, I didn't feel good in my own skin. Like I was going through a period of massive self-loathing and I wasn't letting myself do the things that I wanted to do because I, I didn't think I could do them or I didn't want to be seen. So like I wouldn't take a trip and put on a swimsuit as long as I was overweight until I lost the weight, you know? And in this cycle, it was so funny because I kept putting off taking this trip and I was like, okay, I'll take it when I lose weight. And then the more I waited and the more emotionally charged I got, the more weight I kept putting on. So instead of losing weight and actually get closer to taking a trip, I just kept putting on more weight. And then the trip just became this, like, thing that felt like it would never happen. And one day I asked myself, like, you know, it's it's been a while. Like, we've been here for a hot minute, right? And we've been struggling with our weight. And we've been struggling with how, like, we, I mean me, struggling with how I feel for my about my body. And struggling to do the things that I wanted to do. Um, even showing up on, I think, I, I think even sometimes I think I wonder if, you know, my breakup, <laughs> not breakup, but cool off season with social media had more to do with the fact that I was carrying extra weight than I was kind of over social media. Like I often ask myself that question, would I be doing things differently if I felt more confident in my body and in my skin, right? And this is something that we as women all struggle with and it doesn't matter, like what the thing is we're insecure about. We're insecure about we have excess weight or we have not enough weight. We, we're insecure because our boobs are too big or our boobs are too small. Our ass is too big or our ass is too small. Like we have acne, we have cellulite, we have wobbly bits, we have all these things, right? And it, it plagues us. Like it plays on our mind and, and this is just one example, right? Like there's so many ways we can hold ourselves back. Like I could come up with a list. Um, we don't apply for the job unless we have all of the fucking qualifications listed in the job description. Otherwise it's like, nope, I'm not good enough for this. Um, we don't go out there dating because we don't feel good enough about ourselves and our own skin to be out there dating people. We, um, I don't know. We don't put ourselves out there for promotion at work because we're afraid to really stand out or ask for what we want or ask for that raise because we don't think we're worth. There's so many ways that we hold ourselves back because we don't think that we're good enough and that we're not perfect and we haven't, we don't have it all figured out and we haven't checked off all the boxes, right? On the criteria that we put on ourselves. And so we hold ourselves, we keep ourselves in this holding pattern in hopes that we'll one day be able to be perfect and do the fucking things that we want to do. Inevitably putting life on hold. I did this for 40 years. Like there's so many things I put on hold, so many goals, so many desires. Like the trip was just one of them, right? That was just one example, but there's so many others. The podcast, putting myself out there, sharing on socials, really like being consistent with my messaging and, and, and not caring what people think. Always kind of getting in my head about, is it right? Am I doing it right? And, and, and it's not perfect. I can't put it out yet. I can't put it out yet. Like this should have taken me so much less time, but I was in constant mental struggle, not applying for promotions at work, not getting out there and, and doing the activities that I wanted to do because I didn't feel like I could do them perfectly. Right. Um, I love dance and I, I've always loved dance and I actually, I did used to, um, I, I was an amateur dance performer at, at one point in my life, not too long ago. Um, but that took years for me to actually get out and go do, like, I wanted to take dance lessons my whole life and I never did. Well, one, because my parents wouldn't let me because they thought I was going to break my neck and die. Oh, the struggles of growing up with Greek parents. Oh, so dramatic. But aside, right, when I was old enough to kind of make my own decisions and get out there and start dancing, I didn't do it because I didn't think I could do it perfectly. And I was afraid to actually get out there and learn in front of other people and make mistakes along the way. And so I put that on hold until, like, I was, like, 40. Um, again, the trips, the the job promotions, like getting out there and actually chasing my dreams and creating what I want – All shit that I had put on hold. Waiting for one day to feel perfect, to check all the boxes, 
to finish doing everything else I thought I needed to do, have, or be first before I could go after said thing. All these mental criterias that I had put in my head that needed to happen before I could do anything. Oh, paying off your, oh my God, this is my personal favorite. Paying off your debts before you actually make a decision to invest in yourself and in your future for something that you want. Like, holy crap. And the debt never goes away. Like, the debt is always there. I mean, sure, you know, there's art, there are strategies out there to help you decrease your debt. And I've obviously, I've been working on that. And that's actually going really well. And I'm really happy about that. But to say that you're putting your life on hold until you like, get rid of all your debt, like, come on, like, I mean, people have mortgages, car payments, are you really going to put your life on hold until all that's said and done? I mean, be mindful, obviously, and be responsible with your resources. But fuck, don't put life on hold. Right? How many people put life on hold until they have X amount in their bank account before they allow themselves to actually enjoy life? Like, that is just ass backwards, people. We have to stop putting our lives on hold, waiting for things to be perfect and all the boxes to be checked off before we start living our best life. And I asked myself when it came back, you know, let's get back to the trip for a second. When it came down to the trip and I saw one year, two years, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years gone by. (laughs) And I hadn't taken a trip anywhere and I was dying for some beach time. And this was, this was not too long ago. Like, guys, like, I'm going on vacation now in July. Um, and it took, it took a hot minute for me to book this trip because I was so insecure about how my body is. And now, mind you, like, I've been, like, eating really healthy and really mindful about the foods I put into my body. And I've been trying to exercise more. I've been trying to do it all really in a really healthy and responsible way. Um, So I'm not doing anything like drastic to my body to try and like get trip ready or in my head to get trip ready. However, you know, there was a moment, there was a moment, there was a very clear moment. It was a couple of months ago. And I said to myself, if I, cause you know, I'm 48 now, like I'm premenopausal or perimenopausal, whatever you want to call it. My body's, you know, my, my metabolism has slowed down quite a bit. So, you know, losing weight is a little bit more challenging for me than it used to be. And obviously menopause does things to your body, ladies, that you never really plan for or anticipate or even think could ever possibly happen. But sure enough, it's like, wow. (laughs) If you're not there yet, just trust me, you'll know what I'm talking about when you get there. Um, You know, I may never be able to really fully lose the weight or it could take a really long time. And, you know, I'll probably never look the way I did in my 20s and 30s and, you know, whatever, even early 40s. And so I asked, I said to myself, self, am I willing to never do this? I've been waiting eight years to take a trip. Am I willing to wait around another 8, 10, 20 years? What if it never happens? What if I never lose the weight? Am I willing to never go on another trip again? When it came to the podcast and and feeling like nothing was perfect around there and I haven't figured out the perfect strategy and the perfect content and the perfect stories that I want to share and the perfect topics of conversation that I want to focus the podcast around because I have so many things that I want to talk about. Sometimes it is really hard for me to pick that perfect thing, that perfect message that I kind of want to put out there into the world. And it's like, are you really going to not do this thing that you dream about doing and, and that lights you up so much because you can't figure out the perfect thing? Because you don't quite know the perfect strategy because you're not sure if the systems you have in place are perfect or your recording is perfect or your notes are perfect or your intro is perfect. Like all these things that we do that we get into our head about that keep us from doing that one thing that we want to do or two things or three things or ten things or whatever that keep our lives stuck where we don't want to be and keep us stuck so far from what we, the reality we truly want and desire, are we willing, and this is a question that you need to ask yourself if you're stuck in a position of putting your life on hold, waiting for some sort of feeling of perfectionism to be, um, to be, what's it called? (laughs) 
to be basking in this feeling of perfection of, of, of having everything be perfect and having checked off all the boxes and feeling to- and feeling totally and a hundred percent ready to do said thing. Are you willing not to ever do that? Waiting for something like that that will that those things that will never probably never come. Are you willing willing to wait five, ten, twenty more years, or possibly have it never happen? Is that how you, do you want to continue if you've been in a pattern of, if you've been in a uh, holding pattern in life and it's frustrating and I know it's frustrating as fuck because I've been there. I've been there for a very long time. Are you willing to be caught in that pattern for another 5, 10, 15, 20 years stuck where you are right now in this moment? Where are you been trying to get out of for the last 5, 10, 15 years? Are you willing to be there for another 5, 10, 15 years more? How old are you now? Do the math. At five, at 10, at 15, at 20. <laughs> Keep going. I don't know how old you are, so I don't know how many years to add. But um, are you willing to do that? What's that thing? I want you to grab an image in your mind of that thing that you really want in this life, be it a career, a car, a home, a relationship, um, a trip. A, uh, a dream, a purpose, something that you've been holding yourself back from, a lifestyle maybe even. Maybe you want to be more active. Maybe you want to be more adventurous. Maybe you want to have more fun. What is that thing that you're holding yourself back from because you don't feel good enough to do it yet? And you've been waiting what feels like a lifetime to feel good enough to do it or have it. Are you willing to wait even another day? Hey, gorgeous. I hope you are loving this episode so far. We are going to get right back into it. But before we do, let me ask you, are you through with entertaining toxic, emotionally unavailable relationships and situationships that will never see you as anything more than just an option? Are you ready to up-level your standards and bid farewell to the era of it's complicated relationships once and for all? Can you imagine what it would be like to walk around confident as fuck knowing that you're surrounded by more loving and fulfilling relationships that always treat you like you're the only woman in the room? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you're exactly who I created my up-level and flow private mentorship program for the online one-on-one coaching program that has been specifically designed to help you up-level all your relationships and your life. Whether you're looking to attract more loving and fulfilling relationships or up-level existing ones, this program is for you. My up-level and flow mentorship program will take you from the woman who is constantly settling for less than she wants and deserves in her relationships and in her life, who has pretended to be content with the it's complicated relationship status for far too long, to the woman who dares to raise her standards and expect more out of her life and her relationships and actually get it. Never ever chase anyone again. Be the one and the one will chase you. Send me a DM at the Femcast on Instagram or email me at maria at femcoach.com for more details. Let's get back to today's episode. Hasn't the waiting kind of been long enough? Aren't you ready to just enjoy the presence or or the, the creation of whatever that is that you want to bring in or call in? Aren't you just ready to just get out there and just start taking steps and making it happen or going for it, even if you don't feel ready or perfect or prepared or or like you've got it all figured out? Do the thing. If, if, if you're hearing a no right now, then you have got to take action. And it doesn't have to be massive action. It could be little tiny baby steps, baby step actions. This is what I always preach. Don't think about everything you got to do now to get to where you want to be. Don't think about that massive gap and everything that has to happen in between that gap. Just think about the next step. When I did this for me with the trip, 
I was like, no, I am not willing to wait another year, two years, five years, 10 years to go on a trip and enjoy myself and relax and get some sun and feel some sand between my toes and have a fucking mojito by the beach. (laughs) Not available for for waiting any longer. Even if I am insecure in my body, so fucking what? I'm going to be mindful about what I eat. I'm going to get my ass to the gym. I'm going to feel good about my body the way it is right now. I'm going to feel strong. I'm going to feel confident. I'm going to go out there and buy some swimsuits that make me feel good. And I'm going to go out and enjoy this fucking trip. And I did that one step at a time. First step, book tickets. Okay, great. Second step, get my ass to the gym. Step three, clean up my diet, eat better, make sure my body is nourished, make sure my I'm putting healthy foods in my body, you know, without like doing it very responsibly, you know. Um, okay, did that. Now go out, buy the sim- swimsuits, make sure I feel good in them, make sure I feel comfortable in them. You know, not putting pressure on myself to look a certain way or fit a certain image or ideal that I've had in my head and, and, you know, working with what I've got right now and making the best of it. And that was literally my strategy. Am I nervous? Yeah, I am. I haven't, I haven't worn a swimsuit in eight years because I've been so insecure about my body, you know? Um, okay, maybe not eight years. Maybe it's been probably five or six, um, but still, like it's been it's been a hot minute, right? And I'm a little, you know, my body's changed quite a bit. We had COVID, my parents were sick, I've gone into premenopause. Like there's a lot of things that kind of played into um, you know, where where I was and, and where I am right now. And and a lot of self-loathing and insecurity as a result of how quickly my body changed. Um but you know what? I am still me. I am going to go out there. I'm going to have an amazing trip. Yeah, I'm probably going to feel uncomfortable to sit here and preach to you guys and say that I'm not going to feel uncomfortable. I'm just going to choose to love myself. No, I will probably feel uncomfortable, especially at first. I can just imagine myself on the beach right now, taking off my sarong or my beach wrap or whatever it is that I've got on and feeling like everybody on the beach is staring at me. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel the stares on my body right now. But you know what? The reality is no one's going to be staring. (laughs) I know that's all in my head. I know it. I know it's all in my head. And I know this because everybody's going to be too drunk on mojitos to give a shit. (laughs) Mojitos and sun. That's it. (laughs) Right? Everyone's going to be having the time of their life. What do they care? Right? I'm probably seeing things way worse than they really are, to be quite honest. Um, because I'm seeing the difference, right? Sometimes it's not even about the number and the scale. It's about having this visual of yourself the way you were and the stark difference of where, of what you, where you are now and looking at and comparing the two. So it's like you're constantly comparing yourself to this past version of yourself. Anyway, it's totally distorted. Like I said, I think I need to start sharing more about my weight loss journey in this process because it really is a reflection of, of, how my people pleasing and perfectionism has plagued me again and again and again. My body is one very distinct example of that. So, and I forgot where I was going with this tangent, but anyway, um, you know, I'm choosing to go, I'm choosing to go and have the best possible trip I can making it as comfortable as I possibly can and knowing that, yeah, you know what? It is probably going to feel uncomfortable at first and that's fucking okay. And that is actually, actually, that is part of radical self-love. When you can recognize that, you know what? Some things are going to be hard and they're going to feel uncomfortable and you're going to rag on yourself a little bit and probably be harder on yourself than you should be. But still choosing to do the things that you want to do and not let that hold you back and just being really gentle and really kind on yourself in the process is really the best you can do. And all that anyone, not anyone, all that you can really ask for of yourself. So going back to the exercise, what is that thing that you want that you've been holding yourself back from because you don't feel ready, you don't feel good enough, you don't have it all perfectly figured out, you haven't checked all the boxes and all the criteria that you think in your mind that you need to have before you go after said thing. What is that thing? And are you willing to wait for it any longer? How long have you waited for it? How long has that wait felt? 
And are you willing to wait longer, a year, five years, 10 years? Are you willing to wait knowing that it may never come if you keep waiting? And if the answer is no, and really listen to me right now, close your eyes. If you're not driving or operating any machinery, close your eyes for a second. If it's safe to do so, what is the first step you need to take? What is it? Let me know in the comments, wherever you're seeing this, or send me a note at maria at thefemcoach.com and let me know. What is that first step you're going to take? And then commit to taking it and just do it. And don't think about all the other steps that need to happen in between to get you from point A to point B. You just focus on one step at a time. And when you've got that step figured out, come back to this episode, do the exercise again, and then think of the next step and the next step and the next step. This is actually a lot about what we talk about in the best hot mess life practice. What is that next step? And there's a meditation in there to actually help you get into this process on a more regular basis. So you can sign up for that. It's totally free. You can go to the website at thefemcast.com and it is all there or I'll try and leave it in the show notes below. It's where we're seeing this. So, but that is one of the processes that we do on, on the regular because it is so important to get out of our head and actually go after and create the life that we want to create and stop putting ourselves on hold. For some impossible standard that we put on ourselves that we're never, ever, ever going to achieve, at least not, you know, even if it is achievable, we're not going to achieve it like this sitting on sidelines. We're going to achieve it when we're out there living our best life. Because I'll tell you right now, ever since I booked that trip, my weight started coming off. Even though I've been trying to lose weight for years and you know, watching what I eat and trying this diet to the next diet and this workout program to that workout program, nothing ever worked. I kept putting on more weight. Now that I actually booked the trip and got over my, got over it, I was going to say got over myself, but I actually don't like that phrase. When people say get over yourself, it's just very, no, it's not based in self-love. So when I got over what I was, you know, the, the, the mental thing that I was struggling with and, and just got past that, and decided to just take action and just book the trip anyway and say, you know what, come hell or high water, I'm going to take this trip. And I know I'm going to feel awkward at first, but that's okay. I'm going to make myself as comfortable as I possibly can. And I'm going to enjoy this trip because I fucking deserve it. Suddenly the weight starts to come off. Funny how that happens. It's almost like Whatever it is that you think you need to have to feel good about yourself won't come until you actually let go of needing the thing. And suddenly everything kind of falls into place. Isn't that interesting? I will leave you with that. (laughs) Think about where that might apply in your life. Let me know in the comments. Or again, you can give me a show, you know, shoot me an email at maria at thefemcoach.com. If you have a question or something else that you want to share or talk about or hear more about or ask me about, let me know. Who knows? You just might inspire the next episode of The Femcast. And if you love this episode or my podcast, please, 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 pretty, please leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're seeing this and help get the word out there. Until next time, massive love. 